This is a more physical, bigger team than maybe uh, you know the perimeter shooting teams that, that you faced. Um, right. This kind of matchup problems is IU totally with you. Yeah, you know, just their ability to have you know two guys of, of great size and length that can both post up and shoot the ball in the perimeter. Um, you know, they're they're both really good athletes. They run the floor. They get on the glass. They're skilled. They're athletic. Um, they have a real good connection between the two of them too. You can see some of the lobs that are no throws where, you know, they, they have, you know, that connectivity um, on the interior where they pass it to each other and share the basketball. But, um, you know, they're not their only two guys, but uh, just kind of that, that one-two punch on the front line is pretty impressive. Coach, how would you describe this rivalry? A guy who's coached it so many times and played in it. Yeah, it's, um, you know, one of those things that's, you know, pretty special to be able to, to be a part of it for, you know, close to 25 years. Um, um, but it's difficult, like from a competitive standpoint, like it's it's hard. They've they've had some really good teams. Um, the environment um, that they have in Assembly Hall is is very imposing. Uh, we've had some success. We've had struggles. We've been a little bit of everywhere, and in terms of uh, the numbers there and, and, and playing at Indiana, but um, you, you still have to play better than them. You know more than anything. You know they they've played better than us here in the last couple of years. Um, they've made more plays than us. They've been tougher than us. Um, they force turnovers, um, so they've uh, they, they've had the upper hand on us the last couple of years, and so. But it, it's still one of those things that you know you cherish. It's not something that's going to just you know continue to happen forever. They've struggled a bit from three, but I'm sure you respect them as a three-point shooting team, right? Yeah, they seem to struggle from three, but they don't struggle from three against us. <laughs> you know, and I don't know if that's a positive for them or a negative for us, but um, it, it seems that you know they do a great job of competing and getting up for this game. But they've also made plays in this game, so you have to give them credit. They've had guys make some tough shots, and um, at times open threes because we're trying to scheme to stop their front line or stop Trace Jackson Davis or you know whoever their you know quality players are at the time. But um, you know we just got to do a better job of keeping them out of the paint and breaking rhythm more than anything. But sometimes when you have big time players and you overdo some things and give them a little bit more attention, you know, those guys are going to make you pay. You have so many guys on your roster from Indiana. They they grown up with this rivalry. Does right. that make a difference in this situation? Um, I, I think it probably makes a little bit of a difference, not in terms of the outcome, but just in terms of like a kind of what it means. You know, for someone who's in their freshman or sophomore year and they're not from the state of Indiana, I think it takes a couple, you know, year or two to kind of realize how competitive it is and, you know, how hard it is and, and like both teams want to win. Um, obviously, both fan bases want to win. Yeah, and I think that's a, a key push once you walk into Mackey Arena or Assembly Hall and you hear the noise when those games go on. You pumped the crowd noise in today. Is that something you did last year? Something we've done for 20 years. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know any other way to try to get them to understand that, like at times when you're calling out ball screens left, right, switch, whatever, that you're not going to hear it. You know, you got to be able to keep playing and still do your job. And if something breaks down, you got to help, you know, help each other's teammates with your actions, sometimes not your words. And that's hard because a big part of basketball is the communication. Mbakwe is a really big, versatile wing. Yes. Is he a kind of player that makes you almost, it's, do you need to throw another big size at him? Or do you um, change your rotation at all in that capacity? Not really, just, you know, you, you try to break his rhythm. Like, you know, he's a rhythm shooter. He's a guy that can catch and shoot. He's, he's shown as he's gotten more acclimated to college basketball that his decision making is much better, especially when he puts the ball on the floor. You know, he's the top 15 player in the country. You know, it speaks for itself. He's a very talented, he's got good physical ability, he's got a good skill level. Now his decision making is better, his defense is better. That's where he struggled, you know, the first five, six, seven games of the year. You know, it, it cost him minutes because he wasn't ready to defend. And now he's doing a much better job. He's on his line, he's aware, he knows what's going on, he knows what Mike wants. Um, at least it looks that way, right? You know, for a young guy, it's hard. It's, it's always hard, but, you know, you, you got to have that kind of a talent and that kind of skill in the game. So as a coaching staff, they look like they've gotten that figured out, and he's really made progress in that area. How's Galloway uh, improved over the time yeah. he's been there? He's, he's become a big-time player for him this year. Yeah, you know, I recruited him really hard. I spent a lot of time recruiting him and was a big fan of his, and uh, not just as a player but as a person. Um, you know, he's about winning. He makes a lot of winning plays. He's very competitive. Um, when he gets it going, like you look at the Kansas game and how he played, like I mean, he was an all-conference player in that game. But he can affect the game, you know, with his defense, his ability to get steals, 
um, his awareness. He knows what's going on out there. And so, you know, just a good two-way player. You got to try your best to keep him from going downhill on you and, and not get rhythm shots. Woodson kind of gets a rap as an old school coach. Mm -hmm. um, what does he do just to fit that roster that he has? Well, I think some of the things that he's done a, a really good job of, like, you know, they, they do a lot of really good things defensively and how they set their defense, their foundation of their defense through their help. You know, they really build in their help and do a good job. They now, that really helps if you got guys on the ball that can contain the dribble. You can't live and help. You know, you, you got to help here and there, but you just can't help all the time. But from a defensive standpoint, I think they're, not, if I, I got myself correct on this, I think they're number one in defensive efficiency in conference games only. And, and that's where I, I think it starts. Like if you can have a good defense, even when, you know, offensively, as we all know, sometimes shots don't go in, you know, now you can go on the road and, and steal that victory like they did in Michigan because you've got a good front line, you've got a good defensive foundation. Um, but like, no, they run good stuff. They do different things. And he's tweaked a lot of stuff because, you know, he's, he's a little different now with Renault and Ware. You know, just not just one of those guys like Trace Jackson did. So Race Thompson did a great job of complimenting him. Um, but but Khalil Ware causes some real issues with his length and his shot making ability. But um, no, Mike runs good stuff offensively. And then, and like I said, like they've been really good on the defensive end. What's your, what's your best memory of this rivalry in Assembly Hall? Probably my first one, and um, I didn't play, which probably helped us win. Um, <laughs> no, that wasn't a joke. Um, but we were down 18 and a half, 17 and a half, and we came back and forced it into overtime, and then we were able to win in overtime. And Coach Knight always didn't guard like a guy or two. That's kind of like, and I do the same thing. It's kind of the, his version of a zone, right? Um, but no, they, they left a couple of our guys open. You know, a guy off the bench and, and probably our fourth or fifth starter left them open. They made a couple of key shots and were able to pull out the win. But getting back to Mackey Arena, so it's my first you know, experience of that. And then we, we couldn't get off the bus because the students were shaking the bus, which was a little scary. But it was, you know, when you're 19, that's a good moment, right? So, but then, no, that just kind of, we were able to beat them very luckily, uh, beat them twice. They were real young and good. And they were eight and ten that year in the Big Ten. Um, and then obviously they were they were dominant the next three years. If you go back and look at ninety one, ninety two, and ninety three, they were really good. What, what's it like being a young kid walking into Assembly Hall like that? Yeah. Wearing, wearing Purdue colors. Yeah, well, I'd played pickup there before, and I'd played in games there before in AAU. So like, um, you know, you, you had been there, but you hadn't been there in that environment. And so like, I was glad I didn't play because it wouldn't have been good for us. But uh, no, it's. Um, you know, they were just so good in those next three years. Like, it was very, very tough. We didn't win those next three years. We won, I think, once at home at that time. We swept in my first year. Um, but no, it's, it's just like going out to, I always tell everybody, like, you can talk about those other leagues, but, you know, the environments in the Big Ten are, you know, are big time. Like, it's, it's, it's a little surreal walking in there as the head coach at Purdue. Touching on that, Smith and Moyer, it'll be their second game there then. Yeah. Are, are you way more prepared the second time now that they've seen it once? Yeah, they've been, you know, they've been in a lot of big time games. If you look at what they've done, you know, in non-conference and, and just, you know, winning the league last year and, and playing in those venues and everything's a learning experience. Even going this year, like, you know, we're one and two on the road. So like, we, you know, we got to play better. Like we got to play better. We didn't play very well at Nebraska. And then defensively, we weren't very good at uh, Northwestern. I thought we, we did a better job against Maryland um, at the time, but like we, we got to, you know, be ready to play. Both those guys are good players. They've, They've been, you know, through it. They've had a lot of experiences, even as young players. So, you know, we expect them to play great. Could you describe Will Berg's acclimation to the team? You know, coming coming from mm -hmm. Sweden a couple years ago. Yeah, he's he's been really good, to be frank with you. He missed four or five months last year with bone spurs, and so that slowed him down a little bit. He goes against Zach every day, and um, that's really helped him. But he's got a great attitude. He, he's physically gotten better. His skill level's better. Um, just across the board, you know, he, he just keeps working and um, it's very frustrating because, you know, obviously Zebo goes to the league, you know, he's going to have a chance to play and now he doesn't and, you know, and now he's not in that position, but yet, he, you know, he doesn't drop his head. He doesn't use that as an excuse. You know, he just keeps working every single day and, you know, he, he's going to help us win some, ball, you know, some basketball games. There's no question about that. I think obviously these guys know <clears throat> the stakes with the Big Ten standings going into this game. Mm -hmm. They know this is a big deal, but you kind of have to level it out and say, it, it, in the grand scheme of things, this is just another game. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's, 
it's preparing from a schematic standpoint for the game. It's, pre it's preparing from a competitive standpoint. It's like, you know, who's going to be the smarter team and who's going to be the tougher team? You know, just whacking people and getting fouls isn't very tough. It's, it's stupid. You know, like, go out there and be physical without fouling. Be physical and be functional. You know, I can play physical basketball and not let my man catch. I can play physical basketball and not let my man get a rebound without fouling him. So I think sometimes that gets lost in games and all of a sudden you get some quality players that get into foul trouble because they jump over the fight. Like, you got to keep things in perspective.